The next two videos will be all about YAML and DataView in Obsidian. DataView is arguably the most powerful plugin in Obsidian, but it can get overwhelming quickly, and the first source of frustration tends to come from annotating your notes. So this will be a short video fully dedicated to using YAML in Obsidian, because if you want to take DataView to its full potential, you need to know how to properly annotate your notes so that you can easily query them using DataView. Before we go over YAML, we need to talk about metadata. Metadata is just data about data. Almost every digital file has some sort of it. If you take a picture with your phone or camera, it'll have a bunch of metadata. It'll have its size, pixel resolution, file type, file name, date created, bit depth. It might even have geolocation based on whether or not you enabled it on your camera. Now, that's the data that gets automatically created. But you can also create your own metadata. Let's say that you're typing out a book review here on Obsidian. Some examples of metadata would be your star rating of the book, you know, one through five, the book genre, maybe some tags, etc. When you enable data view in Obsidian, it will automatically create a bunch of metadata to your notes, such as the date the file was created, file size, title, path, etc. I'll leave a link in the description to all the metadata fields that get automatically created with data view. So now you might be thinking, why should you care about annotating your own notes when data view already creates a bunch of metadata for you? Well, that's because DataView gives you the liberty of using your own metadata, one that you've created yourself. And by annotating your own notes, you can then decide the parameters that you can then query with DataView. But to take full advantage of that, you need YAML. So what is YAML? Depending on who you ask, they'll tell you YAML stands for either YAML ain't markup language or yet another markup language. For what it's worth, I like to call it yet another markup language, but it doesn't really matter. YAML is simply a human-friendly way of adding metadata to your notes. It's just like JSON or XML, but it's much more user-friendly and much easier to understand. So let's see this in action. All right, so here we are back at our Mastering Obsidian Vault. And before we go over YAML, you need to come here to Settings and go on your Editor page. And you got to make sure that Show Front Matter is set to On. So with that out of the way, let's close this and let's do a YAML annotation. So to add a valid YAML header, you need to add three dashes, enter, and then another three dashes. So three dashes, enter, three dashes. And now what's in between them is gonna be your YAML header. So for instance, you can type tags, colon, evergreen notes. Remember there's no spaces allowed in tags. And you can see here on the right that it already picked up that we have a new tag called evergreen notes. Then we can have something like alias, our YAML presentation, so now when we press command O and we search for our YAML presentation, it will show up because it's already seen as an alias. And then we can have something like type, we can call it YouTube. So now if we toggle on preview mode, Obsidian knows that we have a valid YAML header. Now, although YAML is easy, it is however picky with how you type it out. And the first thing is that it needs to be the very first thing in your note. If I come here, go back to edit mode, and I type anything here, just the letter A, it's already an invalid YAML. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't even recognize it. Another crucial aspect is spacing. If you don't have this little space here between colon and the beginning of your parameter, if you take it off and you go on preview mode, it's gonna show invalid YAML. So you always gotta make sure there's a space after colon. A great thing about YAML though, is that it'll tell you if your parameters are invalid. If you mess something up, when you go under preview mode, it'll tell you invalid YAML. If you want to have multiple tags or multiple aliases, you need to add a comma after each one. So for type here, I can't just add another type past YouTube. I need to first put in a comma and then add my new type. Now you don't need to use square brackets, but I prefer using them. So I put in here a square bracket on each side. This is simply because I prefer seeing the results on my data view tables on a per line basis. And don't worry, this will make a lot more sense in the next video. Another valid way of displaying your YAML header is by indenting each parameter in the format of a list. So if I come here and get rid of my square brackets, and my comma, I can then put YouTube and recording as its own files. However, I can't just leave it like this. If I leave it like this, it's gonna be an invalid YAML. And to fix that, all you gotta do is press one space in front of each one. And now that's a valid YAML. Now you might be wondering how come some parameters like aliases and tags are shown here under metadata while the rest doesn't get a spot in there like type. And the reason right now, as far as I understand it, is that Obsidian only natively supports metadata from tags aliases, CSS class, and publish. And that's why here you see that aliases and tags are under metadata while type remains here on the YAML header. So now that you know YAML, you can implement them into your templates. If you're new here or need a refresher on templates, I made a video on them and how I use them and I'm gonna link it right here. 
but every single one of my templates has a YAML header. This not only saves you time, but makes sure that you never forget important parameters. So as you can see, YAML has three huge advantages over randomly annotating your notes across Obsidian. The first is that it tells you when something is wrong by showing you an invalid YAML. The second is that it makes your notes look much cleaner. And lastly, it lets you annotate based on your own parameters that you can then query your notes using data view, which is what we're going over in the next video. All right, so that's it for this very short video. This was a prerequisite for the next video, which will be all about data view and how I use it. So make sure to subscribe and I'll see you there. Bye.